Are you running a half marathon soon? Well, stay tuned because we have all the tips you need from fueling, training, how to set realistic goals, how to manage your long runs, plus how to tackle race day itself. Make sure you stay right to the end for our ultimate top tip. You don't want to get this wrong. If you're considering a half marathon, step one is to choose your end goals. These are what you're doing and how you're doing it. Okay, so I'm off in my half marathon attempt. Do you want to run a fast time on a flat course or are you going to be taking on a trail half marathon where your goal is just to complete it? Or do you simply just want to head out on your own to cover the 13.1 miles? Whatever your desired reason is to run, you do want to make sure that you do set goals as these are so important to one, structuring your training, but two, will provide that all important motivation to go out and get your runs in each week. So your target can be based on your current or historic levels of fitness and your goal time will affect your training. It will impact the paces of your interval and threshold sessions. If you're not sure what this is, then check out our running terminology video. The best advice I ever got when I started training was to set yourself three goals, plan A, plan B, and a plan C goal. Now, plan A is something that's a bit of a stretch target. It's something you'd be over the moon with on race day, but it might be a little bit out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Your B goal will be a goal that you're really happy with, something that is more achievable than your A goal, and your C goal will be a very, very simple target, like finishing the course. A half marathon is 13.1 miles or 21.1 kilometers. However, it doesn't mean that the time it takes you to run a half marathon will be just over double your 10K time in the same way that your 10K time isn't just double your 5K time. Average half marathon completion time in the UK is 2.02.43 with the elites coming in a bit closer to 60 minutes, with the male record currently sat at 57.31. And the female record stands at one hour, two minutes and 52 seconds. If you're unsure about how to set your half marathon target, then don't worry because there are lots of tools out there to help you. Some sources say that you should simply double your 10K time and then add 10 to 15 minutes. Or if you wanna go for a more complicated maths equation, then some sources say that you can times your 5K PB by 4.667, or you can times your 10K PB by 2.2. Two, two, three. You can do this or you could simply just go for a big time target like sub two hours. If you're still unsure of what you should do, you can either do one of the equations or you can head out for an easy run choosing 1k at a race pace. If that race pace is easy for you, then you can set yourself a harder target or if it is too challenging, then maybe realign your goals to make that a little bit easier so you can do that over the 21.1 kilometers. Then once you've got your target A goal, it's time to turn that into A, B, C and then let the training commence. Oh, it's a hard one. I didn't even go in my mouth. Since most of us take longer than 90 minutes to run a half marathon, you might want to think about your fueling and taking on some carbohydrates during the race, as mostly our bodies can only hold enough to run for around 60 to 90 minutes. Most people will carb load before a half marathon. What that means is increasing the amount of carbs that you eat in the two to three days leading up to the race, as you can't consume enough carbs to load up your stores in one meal. However, this doesn't just mean eating every single thing in the cupboard. You need to be smart about your carb loading too. For some people it works and for some people it doesn't. So it's worthwhile practicing all of this before your long run so that you get used to what you're gonna feel like on race day. And it's not necessarily either about just taking on more food. Think about being smarter with your carbs rather than just quantity of what you're taking in. Think about low GI carbohydrates such as brown rice or pasta, which is really gonna make a difference on race day. As well as loading up on carbs before the race, you might want to take some carbs with you on the run itself. These can be in the form of energy gels, gummy babies, or even energy drinks. The reason we want to do this is because we're going to need that fuel to fuel our carb sources during the race and top it up. Oh, -ho. here we go. This is definitely going to be personal preference. So Mo, what's your go-to race fuel? So I personally like to do energy drinks halfway through the race, like a LucasAid, for example, or some gels. Nice. My you? personal favourite is I've used a lot of gels, but I don't think I use them enough in training for it to be work the best for me. So I'm more of a gummies person. Gummies are good. They're really good. And there are so many different ones on the market now as well. How about you? What is your go to race fuel? Let us know in the comments right now what you would choose if you were running a half marathon today or what you're experimenting with in training. I would love to hear about it. The one thing you do not want to do is try something new on race day. So don't be afraid to practice beforehand while you're doing your training and find out what what works for you. Before you start training, make sure you have a plan. There are so many on offer out there, both free and paid for. Plus there's coaching and coaching apps to consider as well. The key to ensure is that the plan is right for you. So if you're doing a 90 minute half, your plan is gonna be drastically different to if you're training for a two hour one. 
Top tip for choosing a plan, have a look at week one of the plan and see if it mirrors your current training. If it's a bit too high of a jump, then maybe you need to choose an easier plan. And if the training plan is a bit too low for the frequency you're currently doing, then maybe look for a more challenging plan. Your training plan will have lots of different runs on there. So here's a quick guide to the different runs that you might spot. The long run. Most people will argue that this is the most important type of run that you can do in your training. The program will gradually build up over the course of the training. However, you probably won't do the full 13.1 in your training plan. A lot of plans end at around 10 miles, but don't worry, you will end up feeling the vibes on the atmosphere on race day and that will get you through the last three miles. Interval runs, so this is where speed comes into your training. You might have done interval sessions before when you were training for a 5k or 10k and for half marathon training it will look a little bit different, but the reason for doing it is broadly the same. You need to start training at paces that are faster and slower than your race day pace in order to get ready for race day. But as well as speeds, you need to take time and have some slow, easy runs in your program as well. Don't go out and get every single run at your full pace, otherwise sometimes that can compromise your training and make you feel tired during your training block. One element of the training plan that might be new to you is the taper. This is basically easing off the frequency and intensity of runs, usually in the last couple of weeks of training, to leave you fresh and ready for race day. Embrace the taper. It might feel a little bit strange not running as often, but honestly, your body and legs will thank you on race day. Now the training is done, it's time for race day. When running a half marathon, absolutely anything can happen. The most common ones are blisters, cramps, or running out of energy. And the way you can tackle this is by making sure that you wear your race kit during training so you know that you're not gonna blister up. You wanna fuel and hydrate properly during your training and your run so that you know you're not gonna run out of energy. And you wanna just enjoy the process of the race. If you've done all the training, then the hardest thing on race day will be battling the voices in your head telling you you can't do it. But trust in the process, you're ready, I promise. Some top tips to help you go through that mental battle is picking a mantra. Something positive you can say to yourself throughout the race to keep you going. Keep your mind off all the negative thoughts and the pain that you're feeling. Another tip you can have is to think of someone near and dear to you and just picture them every mile. Either the, the moments that you're gonna have with them or the moments you will share with them after you've finished the race. This will help you alleviate the pain from your body as you're completely distracted mentally. And now for that ultimate race day tip we promised you. Don't, Don't go, go off, off too fast. fast. A half marathon is a long way. You will have tapered and on race day, your legs will be feeling fresher than ever. But that doesn't mean that you should sprint off from the start line. Your 5K should be at race pace for that first five kilometers of the race. It definitely shouldn't be the fastest part of the race and it definitely shouldn't be a 5K PB. Hopefully this has got you feeling half marathon ready. Let us know in the comments below what half you plan on taking on. And to stay up to date with our most recent videos, hit the subscribe button below and let us know what else you want to see from us here at The Running Channel. Bye.